Welcome to the Inspired Action Podcast. This is where we have motivational, inspiring conversations and interviews that we hope you'll enjoy listening to. Join us and other inspired actioneers on this alchemical, transformational journey. Welcome to the Inspired Action Podcast. This is pod number 129. My name is Jay, and I'm here with my co-host, with the most, as always, Lita Herman. Welcome back, Inspired Actioneers. Today, we're completing our recent series on the yin and yang aspects of the five elements. And I'm really excited about putting this all together for you in a way that you can really use this information in your life. And in your practice, if you're a healer, are you really excited? I'm really. I'm. Am I never? Uh, am I always excited? <laughs> is it never or always? I don't know. Am I never not excited? There you go. Never <laughs> not. I think that's a double negative. I yes. don't know. But yeah, leader. I think this is really important to summarize this, put it all together. And I often think about this. It's not just the philosophies themselves, but how we can apply these philosophies to our day to day lives. And I think that's like a big missing piece of what's out there right now. So I'm happy that we're doing this today. Yeah. And and what's the point of knowing all this if we can't fundamentally use it to help ourselves and the people we're living with or working with? I hope you're not asking me. I'm a little punchy today. Yeah. I hope you're not asking me that question. <laughs> no, no. That was a rhetorical we question. We could just go on and on. <laughs> yes, but, that's a rhetorical question. And the good news is you can use this in your life. You know, the information is really good. It's really practical. You just have to kind of shift your perspective a little bit. And I know in our practices, I me personally, and when I do my coaching or strategy sessions, you know, people can really change their circumstances of their life by just embracing the five elements in themselves and kind of coming to terms or if that understanding, I don't know what quite phrases yet, but you know, it's them embracing the different elemental types in others as well as themselves. So it's not just like I'm fire or I'm wood. It's all of them layered. It's their stack up. It's the people around them. It's the jobs they chose, the relationship they chose. Then we kind of slide into the nine palaces. So it's all kind of connected or interconnected. Yeah. And we're talking about the ways that they interact with each other, plus the ways, you know, in, in terms of interacting with other people, but also within yourself. So your stack up has elements that are interacting with each other inside of you. You know, and that's a big topic, but first let's summarize these yin and yang aspects before we branch out into those deeper meanings. I guess that's why we're doing the summary today. Yes. The summary of the of the thing before we kick off our next season of the podcast, yeah. we have to be here in the moment today. Yes. But before we do the summary, <laughs> we're gonna talk about what's going on on the podcast in the Alchemy Learning Center. We have so much going on. I know I say that every week, yes. but we really do have a lot going on. Things yes. are Things are happening. Things are happening. Well, first of all, we're looking forward to starting a new season on the podcast, whoop, whoop. season eight, and we're launching that with our next episode number 130, and that will be on the 13 ghost points. Ah, 130, 13 ghost points, a little numerology going on there. I see that. Season eight, lucky eight. Oh, yeah. It's got a lot going on there. Coordinated with our new ghost points book coming out. And with our new Ghost Point Mentorship, which is starting, we believe, in September, we're hoping. Yes. Yay. I'm so excited about our new book called Cultivating the 13 Ghost Points. We've been diligently working on the final edits of the book, and in our next season, we will be talking about how these points can help you in your life. Again, we're trying to integrate these concepts and these philosophies and these theories in a way that we can put them to use in our lives right now. And you know, so many of us, we all seem to have a few skeletons or ghosts in our closets or in our lives or in our, you know, just the way we act and interact with each other. We have to just kind of like jump into this and really be open to it, in my opinion, my always, humble little opinion. I always joke that it's really hard to be on this planet for like, you know, more than 20 years and not have a couple, you know, traumas or negative experiences in, in your closet, so to speak. Sometimes hooks, as we yes. call them, right? And it's really hard to let them go. I think it's more like maybe 15 is the new 20, so. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yes. Yeah. So we're going to talk about, uh, in the next season, about the ways we can release ourselves from these negative influences, how to understand them, how to recognize them, how to see them with no blame, no shame, no guilt, no nothing negative, just positive. 
And even uh, going further than that, how to cultivate these concepts in a more positive way, not just focusing on the negative aspects of them. And if you're really into this and you're a practitioner or an advanced learner, that's where the Ghost Point Mentorship slides right in because you will get that six-month mentorship with Lita and myself, mostly Lita, but I'm there and I offer support. And help quite a bit. I, I help a bit. <laughs> That's right. And so we will guide you through that to really understand it on a personal level as well as a practitioner level. Yes. And we have some other exciting news. What? If that's not enough. If that's not enough. Let's keep going. At our Alchemy Learning Center, we are now launching a new monthly subscription membership option, which is a lower cost way to dive into the ALC and all that we have to offer. Yeah, we've been hinting at this for a while now, and it's kind of exciting for us. We wanted to find a way to really offer all the classes and meditations and different webinars and talks and different, we have so much coming up too. And we we found that, you know, you can still be, we're still going to keep the free membership so you can get that, still get some of the access and you have the option to purchase any class or meditation that you want. However, for the monthly subscription, you'll be able to get all the classes, all the webinars, all the meditations, all the live events. You know, if we have podcast specials, we'll definitely have new meditations coming all the time. You know, we're going to just have so many cool things as well as two live groups, study groups, in addition to the ghost points. So you want to talk about those a little bit? Yes. So um, in September, we're launching the five element study group and the alchemy meditation study group. So once a week, we'll be having a live group, either about five elements or about alchemy. And so anyone who is a subscriber can go ahead and join us for those live events and for free they're part of their subscription that's right so on mondays we'll be doing a talk about alchemy and we'll be doing a meditation with the group and you can also have um there'll be time to ask questions or you know maybe we'll be able to talk about certain aspects that you're going through and then on uh, fridays every other friday we'll do five element fridays which is going to be five elements on fridays are we going to do it at five o'clock we're talking about uh, five o'clock Eastern. So no one can say, what time is it? Right? Five element Fridays I, I, at five. five <laughs> we'll see. We have a lot of people all over the world. And if we can make that time work, that would be a good way to remember it. Right. So those are the two big groups. Plus we all can have, I'm going to say, but don't hold me to this, but I think it's going to happen one live webinar a month, which yes. also is part of the subscription. You can come to it. And all again, we're going to keep the free membership. If you're already a free member, don't worry. You can just add on these things if you want. And join us at a small fee, but really yes. we're hoping that you're going to jump up to the monthly subscription because we got a lot. We're going to over deliver if we can help it. And we're going to be having wellness camps and retreats in the future. In person, yes. For members. And so you'll be invited to those as well. Yeah, you'll get first access yes. to get into those things as well. So you're going to be able to ask questions, share your stories, do all kinds of stuff with us. We're going to try to really, you know get this community, pull it in a little closer and see if we can all just kind of grow and expand together. Yeah. It's about cultivating friendships and finding colleagues. If you're a practitioner, you know, it's about just, you know, getting with like-minded people. And so if this resonates with you, this podcast resonates with you, if this work resonates with you, give it a chance, give it a try, see if it, if it works for you or open. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So that's great. So um, is there anything else you want to talk about? Because I'm like ready to go. Well, just I want to remind people that you can continue to just enjoy this podcast. And if you just want to reach out, we have a Facebook group, Inspired Action Podcast Facebook group, or you can email us at Lita at InspiredActionPodcast.com or Jay at InspiredActionPodcast.com. Yeah, you can send us your videos. You can send us questions. We get them all the time. You could even schedule a treatment if you want with Lita or myself. Uh, we do a lot all over the world. We try to make the time zones work. So, and we're going to have different uh, practitioner options available coming in 2025. So you'll have lots of opportunities to, you know, really dive into this. Yeah. So let's, let's get back to our podcast. Yes. Oh, wait, please like and review. If you like yes. the, any second of this podcast, please <laughs> give us a like and review on the Apple 
the Apple, right? The or, Apple. The, or the Google. Or the Google. Or wherever it is or you listen to Amazon your podcast. Amazon or Spotify. Yes. I or YouTube. It's hard on Spotify, we're doing a little YouTube. We're dabbling. Yes. We'll get into that soon. But as you can tell, we have a lot going on. So, Or if you're on Audible, we actually are on Audible as yes. well. And if you're on Audible, then you can also rate and review our Audible book if you haven't yes, gotten it. Yes, which is it. Through you the Mystery check Gate. It out. Through, through the, the Mystery Gate. Which is a very cool and interesting book, in my opinion, again. And if you write us a review, send it to us and we will send you a t-shirt. Or yes. something like that. Or a mug whatever you or want. a hat. Whatever you want. We have swag. swag. Lots of swag. <laughs> All right. So let's get back to the topic of the day, this summary that you were talking about. So I'm yes. going to let you jump in and I will okay. try to contribute. So I like to say that there are different views into the five element energetics in our lives. And this series about yin and yang is, it's really an interesting angle that's not taught that much in acupuncture schools. All right. So let's find a nice way to explain that, Lita. So if we look overall at this idea that there are people who are more yin and people who are more young, not just in terms of which elemental type they are. Yeah, remember, wood and fire are the most young elements, and water and metal are the most yin elements. And earth is, guess what, in the middle, <laughs> the <laughs> center. They, they always are at the center of everything. So it's really common that we talk about the five elements in this way that, you know, there are the young elements and the yin elements. But if we look across all the elements and notice that there are people who process and there are people who hold and store, regardless of what elemental type they are, then there are commonalities that we need to think about beyond the elemental type that you are. Yeah. And I just want to throw this out there that if you are a first time listener, just go back to the last six, six episodes. We'll hit pause here and wait. Right? Okay, listen to those and and each episode about the yin and the yang aspects of each elemental type. And remember, this is a little bit more advanced than just understanding yes. the first layer or two of the five elements. Actually, if you're new to the podcast, you can go back to episode one and, you know, listen to those Eek. initial. Those are scary ones. But yes, yes, <laughs> don't, judge, don't judge, don't judge. <laughs> And they're not bad. They're wonderful. <laughs> all right. So let's look at all the yang types within the elements. And you'll notice that there are similarities between all of them. So when you look at the gallbladder type, that's the wood element. And you compare that to, let's say, the small intestine or the triple heaters from the fire element. With the stomachs from the earth types and the colons from the metal types, right? And the bladders from the water types. So if you look at all, all of the similarities, of yes. yes. All of them are very active, always doing something, thinking all the time, processing things, because all these organs in the body do that as well. So what you might not realize is that if you're one of those types, which we all are in some respect, right? We just don't know which one. You might really gravitate towards other people like you who aren't necessarily the same element, but you both share this busy activity, this yang activity. Right. So obviously all of these types are going to be different. They do different things, but in terms of the way they converse with each other, they might find a sense of commonality or even feel more at home with each other, you know, because they're similar and yet very different elementally. And contrast that with the yin types across all the elements. Those are the liver for wood, the heart and pericardium for the fire, the spleen for the earth, the lungs for the metal, and the kidneys for the water element. Yes, those types are generally not as talkative, a little less active overall. They just don't do as much processing mentally or even physically, you know, in their lives. And they're just really present. It's like they're they easily hold space for people with that presence. So it's possible that all those types, those yin types might gravitate towards each other as well. Yeah. And we can talk a little bit about what happens. Oh, we actually, we did talk a little bit about what happens if you get into a relationship with someone who is the opposite of you in terms of these yin and yang types of personalities, I guess, if we want to say that, or I would say elemental types. Yes. You might find that you have a lot of disagreements and misunderstandings related to this issue of processing activity versus holding presence. 
Perhaps, for example, the yin person might feel very disturbed by all that running around, that noisiness, the busyness of that yang type. Whereas the yin types might just want to be quieter and not so busy. Yeah, and that maybe will calm them more to have that kind of lifestyle or that activity. Yeah. And this is also important for those of you who felt like you might be one of those elemental types, but something didn't quite match up for you. Perhaps it wasn't so much that you aren't wood, for example, but perhaps you're trying to compare yourself to liver wood, which is really big wood, like a big quiet tree. Maybe your gallbladder wood, not so big, but still active, more like a big bush with lots of bushy branches poking out in many directions, just to give you that big bush visualization. (laughs) In fact, you might not feel that big at all. And even, (laughs) okay, even, we are very serious in this podcast, right? Yeah. (laughs) Even in the I'm not even going to say this bad joke. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to count to five and not say it. (laughs) Okay. So even in the classics, they used a term I've never liked for gallbladder called gallbladder timidity. So if you're not the big bush, but maybe like the medium or small bush. Yes. Which makes, you know, it makes gallbladders seem weak. And it's not that. It's that they're less likely to be confrontational in some cases. You know, it, it just would feel too forward yeah, to a person. I actually person. know a couple woods like that. And they're big and they're strong and they're powerful. They're just yes. quieter. They're just, yeah, they're not as like mm, in your face. But I would not call them timid, tim, timid or timidity. No, that's why I don't like the word. Yeah, I think it, it translates poorly in English. But remember, all wood is assertive, and it's just that sometimes a liver person might stand their ground like a big tree when there's a disagreement, whereas a gallbladder might find a way around an obstacle without having to stand up against someone or something. Yeah, and I also think that the second element also comes into play when we talk about that on a deeper level as well. For sure. You know, um, and I think that the same can be said for the other elements as well. Perhaps we should go through the other ones because I think that would be really helpful, Lita. (laughs) Not that it would give you a ton of work right now, but let's go. <laughs> Chuffed up. What's fire? Okay, okay. So for right fire. Right on the spot here. Let's go. All right. So for fire, you might not feel like you're the kind of fire person that we often talk about. You know, we often say that fires focus on being loved or being beautiful or loving others. But maybe you're just a really busy type of fire person, always sorting, you know, like that supreme sorter type, the, the small intestine that we talked about. Or maybe you're just always socializing. You might be that triple heater type, always running around from party to party. Or class to class. Yeah. So it may be that you just didn't identify totally with fire as like this lighthouse of love, holding the light. Um, But you're just so active all the time. Yeah. And I'll just jump in for earth. You might not be that philosophical spleen type but someone who is constantly thinking through practical matters, maybe worrying about your kids or the cleaning or the cooking, doing so much. You're always running around doing a lot of things for everyone else. And maybe not that deeper philosophical thinker type. Yeah. And we often talk about earth holding the thoughtfulness, that mindfulness for people, but that's the yin type. And maybe the yin type isn't doing as much for people on a day-to-day practical level which might make you think that, hey, maybe I'm just not caring enough to be earth, when in fact, quiet mindfulness is very much the earth element too. Yeah, and we're kind of on a roll here, so I'll jump in with metal. And then maybe you felt like you're metal or think that you're metal, but you're not that quiet lung type of metal we always talk about. So how could you possibly be metal? But in fact, perhaps you're the colon type, very active type of metal, you still like to be quiet, and but even in the quiet, you're very active. You're always kind of doing things like that. You're always kind of moving. You may be like journaling or painting or drawing, but you're active even if you're quieter than some people. Yeah. And you might be a very social one-on-one kind of metal. Um, you might really enjoy people's company. So again, that, you know, way we've sometimes portrayed lung is like, you know, hibernating, hermiting. Hanging back. Hanging back. Yeah. It's it's not the case for the colon types. You might not resonate with that, but as a colon, you're always out in the world looking for valuable things in the garbage of life. You're always dumpster diving in life. <laughs> yes. That's a cool thing. I love that. Yes. And finally, the bladder type. You might not be that still type of water that we talk about. It might not 
hardly spend any time being a couch potato type of water. And you might even not like video games. <gasps> what a concept, oh right? God. But you're constantly on the move. And that just might mean you're the bladder type of water. And a bladder type might be very great friends with like a gallbladder type, even though they're really different. They share the active parts that brings them together. They just love to do things together. But, you know, in very different ways, like watch them climb a mountain together. Yeah. Well, you're going to be like a drone, like <laughs> watching them. Yes, yes. Yeah, the wood person is going to go straight to the top and, you know, what's the most fastest, efficient, you know, how much gear can I carry up that route, right? <laughs> yes. And we often say the waters like to take the road less traveled and see what's hiding out on the other side of the mountain, the one no one climbs. They might not even make it to the top. What a concept for a wood they person. They like that path. They just may be meandering, but yes. still doing stuff. They might be doing like a geocaching or, you know, collecting flowers or looking for something like unique or whatever as they're doing that, right? Right. Yeah. Maybe another example is a lung person might really enjoy a spleen person because they can sit around and talk about abstract philosophical concepts all day. Different yes. than climbing the mountain. Yes. But a different kind of mountain. Yes, because they're the yin types. And so they just literally hold space and and they enjoy a good conversation, but it's not so much that processing active mental state. It's more Hmm, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? So. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the relationships. You know, we often talk about what it's like to be married to a different elemental type, but what about if you're married, if you're young and you're married to a yin? Or you could just say in a relationship. Person. Yes, in a relationship. It not, it's a modern thing not to always get yes. married now. There you go. And we just don't talk a lot about that yin versus yang, but let's take that earth versus like water relationship. And we know that one can be tricky at times. We've talked about this before on the podcast, earth controls water. But when we really look at this particular relationship, what if that, you know, water person is the yang type and they're with a yin so You can say type. married if we want, but <laughs> they're a r romantic relationship? Yes. Okay. There you go. They're with this earth yin type or married to them. And you could see that this is going to play out in their practical lives. The bladder type tends to be messier and it's always spilling out all over the place. And that earth person might want to contain all that water splashing out. So the earth person might make rules, might make boundaries. They might say, here's a place you can be allowed to mess things up, but everywhere else is off limits. And, you know, that can really help that relationship once they understand, look, this person's going to spill out all over the place. And it might be like watching that water person run circles around the earth person, you know, just doing, 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 doing. And that, you know, there's just so much activity. And maybe that earth person is just, you know, quieter and they're just thinking a lot and they love to do like quiet crafting projects or read a book or... Like crochet, quilting, yeah, yeah. needle felting, yeah, or crafting. Even, even going for walks, maybe sitting in nature and there meditating. You go. I like that. That yeah. sounds good. That explains it good for me. Yes. Okay. So what we like to do with the relationships is when we look at these, is to look at the factors. What are the different factors? How are you interacting with each other based on the way your main elements interact with each other? Do you have a nourishing energetic relationship or a controlling energetic relationship? This is something that people ask us about all the time, especially the controlling one. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about that again. I know we've talked about it a lot. We've talked about this many times. Some elements nourish each other and some control each other. So controlling relationships can sometimes be more contentious, especially if both people don't understand that it's natural and normal that each of us has an element that naturally controls us. Yeah, you might think that your element isn't controlled by another element. So in that case, you're probably wood, right? Here's news <laughs> for you, wood. Guess what? Every element has another element that controls them. Wood is controlled by metal, which can chop wood down. <laughs> Right? We talk like about this all the time. <laughs> chop, chop, chop. <laughs> and earth controls water by containing it. Ooh. I don't know what that means. Is that, is that your know. sound effect? That's all right. like water in it. a container. I don't know. And water controls fire by putting it out. There you go. 
And fire controls metal by melting it. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, and wood controls earth by growing on or over it. That's, stomp, stomp, stomp. That's going to be a hard I one. I don't know. Stomp, stomp, stomp. <laughs> hey, we didn't say you had to prepare for sound effects today. Yeah, no. You just started doing that. So I know. <laughs> so we talk about all these energetic relationships often. And the nourishing relationships are those that naturally help each other. And we call those the parent-child relationships. Wood helps fire by fueling the fire. Fire helps earth by warming it. Or you could say the ashes from the fire become part of the earth. I like that theory there. We've talked about that. And earth generates the metals in the ground, and we actually mine them out of the earth. And they don't mine. We (laughs) mine them. (laughs) And metal can hold the water, or it may generate water on its surface through condensation. Yeah, so whenever you're having a nourishing relationship with someone, it's often easier, especially for the child of the energetic relationship. We're getting layers and layers here. Yeah, and so we often talk about these nourishing and controlling relationships and how they affect us in so many ways. But now we can also bring in this yin and yang aspects of each of the elemental types and sometimes discover that the mismatch isn't so much elemental But it's about those yin and yang types that are either active or a little more quiet and thoughtful. Yeah. So let's even go a little bit deeper. If that's possible, we're going to go a little bit more elementally deeper. How can this be helpful in your lives? The big question. First of all, it's about creating more understanding of yourself. I answered my own question, by the way. Yes. (laughs) Just creating more understanding of yourself. Giving yourself a break that you are the way you are and go easy and start to just understand. Yeah. Or even celebrate yourself the way you are. I mean, so many people have grown up in situations where you weren't celebrated just for being you. And now it's time for you to start appreciating the gifts that you're bringing to this world. So let's say you're the liver type, that big tall tree in the forest, but you were told that's too bold or maybe even that that's intimidating. So maybe you've become mad at yourself all the time for being you, and you're trying not to be too strong in the world. Or you hide it, and you be small. Yeah. You know, I always say that's, you know, how's that working out for you? Boom. Sometimes I get the look. I don't know. (laughs) Uh, My guess is not that great, like because you're really not being yourself. You're not really you know, living that true life as a wood person, whether yeah. it's, we just talked about the different ways. It could be a quiet way. It could, yeah. be, it could be a bolder way, but it's being that wood way. Yeah. Yeah. So how about if you're that rare supreme controller hard type, the fire, and you know, now you've learned about how amazing you are and how rare you are and that people don't always appreciate you, but that's got to be okay with you. Yeah. Right. You've got to be okay with that. Yeah. you got to accept that. Yes. And even with you allowing yourself to Be yourself, but also having a choice of when you need to be fully you and when you can bring other aspects of yourself forward so as not to cause constant conflict with others. That's also really important because it's not that you're bad or wrong. It's simply that you can become in control of your own energy. Yeah, it's not that hard. It just has to take, you know, a little time to understand these nuances related to being you. Like we need a little manual yeah. that says you, understanding yeah. <laughs> yourself. You know, we should, we'll, we'll think about writing that, but someone else <laughs> could write it. Okay, we write a lot of stuff. Someone else can write it. But this also relates to how do you live your life. Your nine palaces, which I love to talk about. You first, you have to understand the five elements. Then you can dive into the nine palaces. Once you recognize that you have these specific themes in your life related to your elements, all these just, nuances and deeper thoughts and bigger realizations, they can try to, they just come emerge and you can apply it to a value system, to your decisions in your life, past, present, future. You really, you can't go backwards in the past and you can't go into the future. You could only be in the present moment. But if you can understand that, then maybe you could start to really be authentic and fulfill your destiny. You know, this is so much simpler than you can imagine. I, I, I say it all the time, but it's really important. I don't know. I guess that's where I kind of get off my soapbox here. But (laughs) are you constantly being distracted away from what's most important to you? Do you even know what's the most important things to you? Well, the nine palaces can help you start to prioritize that. But first, you have to understand your five elements. Yeah. And then there are the casual encounters in the world. When you're out and about and meeting people in your day-to-day life, one of the applications of all this theory is 
What if you could utilize your energy to have better communications with others? Sure. I mean, we could do the classic, you know, if you could walk into the car dealership and have that upper hand in negotiations energetically without having to be a bleep or a bleep, <laughs> you fill in your own blanks, <laughs> but just with your own energies, because each element has that power. Yes. And that, you know control and that action. You don't and have we to have be, all five elements. Right. You have to tap into your wood, perhaps, and your yeah. fire. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, you might need to go have that big conversation, ask for that raise with your boss, and you're scared to go in there. But what if you could tap into your five elements and really go in there and make your case in a really positive way? Yeah. Not having to be a beep or a bleep. <laughs> Fill in your own blanks again there. Or resolve that longstanding disagreement with a sibling or a neighbor or someone that really you care a lot about in your life and you realize it was simply based on your energetic differences. No one did anything wrong. Yeah. And these are the things we've seen happen regularly once we help people get awareness of their own energy and how it's interacting beneficially or negatively with other people. Yeah. And I have found that once you realize what's going on, you don't even have to do anything. The universe kind of does it for you. And yeah. people will call you or you'll get this or you'll get that. It's just you are carrying the block. You have to yeah. kind of like let that go a little bit. Yeah. And then, you know, we could talk a little bit about the love relationships, the really deep ones where there's a lot of love and still some misunderstandings. They can be confusing and they can often put people down that slippery slope of, you know, maybe not making it together. And we can help people work that out. Sometimes it's about practical things, like we talked about earlier, just running a household, little annoyances. Sometimes they have disagreements, painful arguments, maybe some trauma from the past surfaces. They may have negative communication skills. They, some people just don't know how to express their emotions. They may just need to find better ways to communicate. Or sometimes it's about touch and sexual intimacy where these differences really show up in the bedroom and it can be difficult to find common ground when you don't understand that it's natural to have those differences. Yeah, and so can you embrace them and can you understand them and can you honor them? These are the things that we think you can begin to look at in yourself and in your life, the ways that energy and elements, they're affecting your life and those around you. And so that's one of the things, Lita, we're going to be diving deeper as we said into the Five Element Fridays. You know, I say study group, air quotes on the study. It's more like a discussion group. It's more like a, you know, a fun, a fun group. Yeah. We're going to have fun with that. So you can, you know, if you're resonating what we're talking about, you can kind of come in on that Five Element group on Fridays at five, we think. Yes. But keep an eye out if you're on our newsletter and we'll let you know for sure. Yes. And in that was a little segue. I'm sorry. Yes. And in the meantime, we still invite you to send us your walking videos if you still need help with your elemental stack up. We also will discuss all those things on the five element on that group as yes. well. So yeah. And so I think for today, you know, that was a lot. That was like so much we just packed into that. So let's give a little bit of homework out. We haven't given out homework in a while. So let's take a really good look at yourself, get out a journal, or maybe if you express yourself through painting or whatever it is, whatever mm -hmm. your creative expression is, I want you to think about how is your element or even your yin and yang type helping you in your life and how does it hold, cause friction or hold you back in your life? So yeah. you need to kind of like think about, do you accept it in yourself or do you always constantly fight it and put yourself down, criticize yourself, that negative self-talk, you know, we've talked in the past about the vigilant mind of positivity. So if you have that, you know, are you always putting yourself down? Are you always blaming people? Are you always blaming yourself? Yeah. You know, I mean, there's so much. So so for, t for this homework, you know, think about that. Try to think of it as learning more about your elemental type and why you are the way you are. And maybe it's not about your lacks, but about your positivity. What do you have? What can yeah. you bring to your own table? Yeah. You know, and then... Maybe you can bring more acceptance, more self-love, more self-cultivation, and you can find the strength to see what's really important in your life. Yeah, and even stand up for yourself in your relationships. If, if you, you need haven't to, done if that. you need yeah. to, yes. How yeah. about you can even stand up for yourself in your own relationship? Yeah, with yourself. With yourself. Yeah, there you go. So all of this is important as we finish up this season, and we're looking forward to starting our new Ghost Point season again, season eight, number 130, so 130. Whenever there's trauma, we need to know who you truly are first. We need these five element things sorted out, your yin and yang aspects sorted out. 
And then we can really look at that trauma and, and hopefully through clearing it, we can really bring you back to yourself. So the elements can help us do that, but also sometimes we need the ghost points. I think so. And also to begin that self-cultivation journey, if you haven't already, you can even start with simple as journaling yes. and thinking of thoughts, and then you can you know, experiment with some meditations. And there's different meditations for everyone. There's not one set way to do anything. So if anyone yeah. tells you do this or, or else or whatever, ah, that should be a red light. Or in this case, rah, rah, since I'm doing sound effects today, a siren should go off in your little head saying, hey, wait, you know what? I'm going to find my way. What's going to work for me? And we do that a lot in the Alchemy Learning Center when we work with people about finding their way. Yeah. You know, I'm all about moving the chi, which is, you know, Tai Chi, Qi Gong, all these different things, even the sword form, like finding your way is going to be your way. So expect, accepting these yin and yangs of your elements will help you find what works for you. Yeah. Awesome. And so I don't, that's all I have to say today. <laughs> that was a lot. That was a lot. That's a good summary. Okay, so hopefully we'll see you in the Alchemy Learning Center, and we're going to do the meditation, my Alchemy and Meditation Mondays, Five Element Fridays, live webinars. You could take all the classes that are in the Learning Center. So if you liked what we're talking about today on the podcast and you're jamming with it, come to the Learning Center. We have a lot going on. We have classes, webinars, live events, old lectures that lead us done, all kinds of stuff. So yes. whether you're a practitioner... Any kind of energy healer or a self-cultivator, lifetime learner, as I like to say, come check it out. We look forward to seeing you in there. And we, we will be back soon with Lucky Season 8. Season 8. Woo-hoo. See you then. Okay. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Inspired Action Podcast, and you've reached the end. Woohoo! Why not celebrate a little bit and click that subscribe button right there. We love having you with us on this journey and we want it to continue. You can also rate and review this podcast. And if you have already, thank you so much. We read all reviews and your reviews help other people find this podcast as well. You can also be a part of this podcast yourself by submitting a voice recording message and emailing it to us at Lita at InspiredActionPodcast.com or Jay at InspiredActionPodcast.com. And if you want, you can join our Facebook group or follow us on Instagram. Join us next week for another Inspired Action Conversation. And thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. And remember to hug the dog. Zena's barking again, so I got to do it one more time.